Ah, bollocks. Okay, guys, this is me on my way to play Expo in Glasgow through Brayhead Arena. It's uh, 20 past nine, so I should be there in about 10, 15 minutes. So I shall report back shortly. Okay then, this is Brayhead Arena, which is a rather large uh, exhibition centre. It's kind of part of a sort of large shopping centre in the very west of Glasgow, um, Junction 25A for anyone that's in this area. As you can see, uh, there's lots of kind of cosplay and what have you. Now that music that's playing, that is not my music, that is the music that was actually blasting out in this particular area. <laughs> I wasn't actually aware of it when I was recording it, funnily enough. Now, it was... Uh, the actual area itself... Um, I was talking to Jim Bagley and he was telling me that... Uh, the area size is actually exactly the same size as Play Blackpool. Although I must admit it did feel... it felt smaller. The areas felt smaller, there wasn't any like different areas, it was just this one large big hall. Although I think upstairs apparently there was a uh, board games which I didn't even look at, I'm not got any interest at all. Now there was a the usual selection of gaming tat, plushies and badges and models and I mean there was prints here, I don't even know, I don't think they are even gaming related at all. I must admit the actual uh, merchandise part was pretty poor, I mean baseball caps and that sort of stuff. I think there was only maybe three, there was the usual pops. There was maybe only three stalls selling video games, consoles etc. There was console, uh, console passion, um, they're their usual kind of quite expensive uh, selves. There was also a stall later on which you'll see, um, it kind of looked more like a car boot actually. They, uh, they were selling a Vectrex that had it advertised as very rare and it had a show special £250 and that was for a basic Vectrex so that was well overpriced Now I must admit I'm not a big fan of trying to record these things you always get some weird looks, I mean there's not everybody's comfortable yeah that's the stall there it looked more like a car boot sale that particular but you can see the Vectrex um, I didn't actually video it. Yep, 250 quid they wanted, and actually, apparently, that was their show special price. So, <laughs> God knows how much they wanted if it wasn't at the show. So, the usual plushies. Yeah, like I was saying, I'm not a big fan of recording these things because some people don't like getting a camera pointed at them, which I don't really, I don't really blame them, you know. So, I was trying to be quite uh, discreet where possible, <laughs> but it just results in a pretty naff recording. Yeah, I mean that there, there was really no video game related stuff. I don't even know what they were selling. It seems to me that, uh, I mean, following the uh, fudge, fudge gate uh, at Blackpool, it seems that they can't, they're struggling to actually get um, people to sell video games, so they're opening it up to other stuff, which to my mind is just a bit rubbish. Maybe they should think about bringing their prices down to advertise stuff because, you know, people don't go along to these things to buy bloody statues or whatever, or fudge. <laughs> so this is all the sort of current consoles, the Wii, PlayStation 4, Dreamcast, is that Dreamcast? I think it was. I mean, that was comics. You know, uh, it's it's a video games event. These are all comics. I really don't see. You know, you can go to Comic Con and get your comics. Why why are they part of a, a video game thing? I'm hoping that person's in cosplay. It's hard to tell sometimes. Aye, like I said, there was only a couple of stalls uh, selling video game stuff. That's Retro Passion. Um, their prices were pretty high. I mean, there was only one thing that I, I had my own. Can you see it there? Uh, maybe not. It was the arcade stick for the SNES. But they wanted 50 quid for it, so I had a quick look on eBay and you could get it for 35 quid. I mean, you know, Star Wars models, that's not video games. Posters, yeah, you can get autographs, you can get your signed pictures with film star autographs. All of these things are available. 
at uh, your special Comic Con things. I don't know why they're part of this thing. I can only guess that because they kind of get people to take out stalls, so they're, they're opening it up to other things. But so this is the main sort of area. These are all sort of home consoles and that kind of stuff. Xbox 360s. I'm not sure what the Brahead Arena is, I think it might, is it a ice rink possibly? You can see all the, the chairs at the side, I think it might well be. Don't know what these were, is that? Damn, that's Xbox Ones. There was a lot of uh, Street Fighter Fives, I must admit, I was watching somebody playing Street Fighter Five. In fact, I had a quick shot myself and it's bloody impressive. Even though I'm not a big fan of uh, beat em ups. <laughs> Yeah, I do apologise about the, the rather shitty uh, video quality, but like I say, there's a lot of people don't like uh, people filming, so I was kind of trying to walk about not making it too obvious. I mean, when I, f when I was filming this, this was, I don't know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it wasn't that busy, which was excellent. It meant that you didn't have to queue too long for any machine. There was always machines you could play on, and I'm talking about the pin tables as well. Um, you know, in the odd occasion, there'd be somebody playing a game, but you waited five minutes, and you could get on. And the Commodore 64 BBC, uh, is that Atari, I think it is? No, that's an Amstrad, that's an Amstrad CPC, whatever it is. Atari 800 XL, um, that's an MSX in the far corner. Whizball Spectrum up, there's the sounds of Whizball. There's Spectrum 48K, uh, Vectrex playing Berserk, I think it is. There's an Intellivision, ColecoVision running Zaxxon. Thing is, I've got all these machines, I've got all these machines at home Atari Junior, Junior. Atari VCS, um, I've got all these machines back home, so I didn't play any of them, I didn't see any point. I did, however, play a metric ton of video games. I actually went along with this just myself, I didn't have any pals with me, which uh, <laughs> it meant that I could just play video games, which is pretty good. Although I did meet quite a few people, I met Jim Bagley, I met Dave, um, Dave's pal, also met Ian. Um, he's a subscriber on YouTube, so it was really nice to meet him. He came up and said hello. I met Craig, Craig Ferguson. I um, was chatting to him and his wife. It was nice to see them. I had a good chat with Jim Bagley. He was showing me um, his latest uh, creation, Bomb Jack, on the Vectrex. So he was showing me how he goes about doing sprites and that kind of stuff. You, can, you may also be able to tell if you've, if you've been to any of these before, this particular arena was very, very light, you know, whereas Blackpool is always quite dim, um, which always gives maybe more of an arcade atmosphere, but I must admit, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I, I quite like the, the sort of the, the intimacy of it. I was wondering what game that is, that looks quite good actually. Is that a PC engine? I think it is. Sega Saturn, uh, don't know what that is, Xbox One, PS4, another PS4, so Xbox One again. I, I quite liked the, the smallness of it, it felt quite homely and because it wasn't too busy you didn't have to walk too far for anything. The only thing it did mean that you'd kind of gone round everything quite quickly but you know, there was plenty, plenty of games that I enjoyed. This is the Indie Zone. Some obscure looking monkey platform type thing. Looks like it's out in iOS as well. Um, Observation, what was that called? Didn't quite catch the name of it. Observarium. Observatorium? Don't know. 
then there was a game that caught my eye and I didn't actually return to it later on. There's Mr. Chef. Yeah, that is a uh, sociable soccer. Now I do actually have a shot of that later on. Got to say, really, really nice. It's got the feel of sensible soccer. Sadly, there was no John here. It was some uh, other person. Now that game looked interesting. I sort of shoot him up. Didn't quite catch what platform it's on. I'm guessing it's PC. Where well, you can see the keyboard there. That looks really nice. A bullet hell shooter of some description. Uh, what was that? Gang beasts. Not sure of that one. But there was certainly something for everybody. You know, there was arcade games, there was pin tables, there was current gen, there was, you know, classic systems. There definitely wasn't the same uh, volume of uh, arcade cabs, that's the only thing. But because there was a lot less people there, you didn't have to wait in, in anything, which was which was excellent. Now that was a Oculus Rift thing. I had that plane all day, I didn't think it looked that impressive, but it seemed to gather a big crowd most of the time. And we're moving to pin tables. There was a lot of pin tables and that for the first time I actually started playing them and I must have not quite enjoyed them. What did I play? Monsters of the Black Creature from the Black Lagoon I think it was. Terminator, I played that Terminator 2. Um, oh, I played various pin tables. But I can definitely see the attraction of these games. <laughs> more uh, current gen. They all seem to be playing Street Fighter for some reason. Nice game, but you know, there are other games out there. But I suppose it's all about the, the co-op, uh, multiplayer side of things. And you've got more pin tables, Avatar. Surfing Safari, I played that one. I played that one, F17, whatever it's called. Black Knight, ah, I think I've played that one. Uh, arcade Pinball. Ah, you've always got to be really careful when you're filming, especially if it's kids that are playing, you know, because <laughs> in this day and age, you've just got to be so careful because people can certainly construe it the wrong way, you know. They may not believe that you, you've got a YouTube channel. <laughs> now these two pin tables, they were actually signed by the guy that made them. I mean the name didn't mean anything to me, but they're both signed. Apparently they're actually linked up. There's a pinball crew, guys. Now this was the large, the large screened off area where they were playing Street Fighter V. The graphics in that game are incredible. They're really beautiful looking. And the game is insanely fast. You can see the two guys sitting down there. A nice brightly coloured dress. More pin tables. It certainly felt a lot more open. Open plan. You didn't feel crammed at any point, which was good. Elvis. Never did manage to get a shot of that. This one here to the right is an ancient looking machine. Fortune. It's all like mechanical scores. Brilliant. A lot of these cabs are for sale as well. I mean, the, is it Attack from Mars or Mars Attacks? Three and a half thousand pounds. I was tempted. But I don't really fancy getting a divorce anytime soon. No, I did. did I have a shot of Indiana Jones? No, I didn't actually. Now I was watching a, a guy, I was going to say an old guy, a guy older looking than me, um, playing a pin table and he was actually one of the pin table um, sort of crew. 
and it's amazing when you see somebody who can actually play pinball. I always think it's a very random game, I mean how can you stop a ball going down, but when you see somebody who knows how to play a game, it's incredible just the skill. That was a demolition man with very dodgy looking artwork. Then moving, that guy seemed to be walking about clutching that keyboard, I don't know what he was doing with it. Out the road mister. That was some kind of 10 pin bowling game. That's Afterburner, hey, that was Galaga. Mr. Do, Pengo, never played that. Tutankhamen, didn't bother with that. Pole position. Sadly, there was no outrun, and I've never ever seen a track and field. Um, yep, there's Robotron, I did get 120,000. I think I had a high score for a very short period of time, and I did play Defender. I had a few shots of Defender. In fact, I'm very, very tempted to ask my mate Mike to build me a Defender controller because I can see myself playing it. It's an excellent game. And you've got uh, Alien Forcer, The Simpsons, Sinister, Stargate, which was I think that was the, the uh, sequel to Defender, Rolling Thunder, I had quite a few shots of that, got to the third level, Marble Madness, never played that, Roadrunner, wasn't interested, Indiana Jones, never played that, Road Blasters, didn't play that, and what was that? I didn't see that one. That's Millipede. Hubert didn't bother with that. That's just so difficult. And you've got a little Tempest cab. And that's Battle Zone. I don't know what was going on there. Crazy Kong. I think that was actually running Mr. Do. Oh no, it was Mr. Do's Castle. And you've got Missile Command, Frogger, Defender again. Berserk. Now I was delighted I actually got the high score in Berserk. Um, I was on about 12,000 and one of the organisers came up to me and says, oh, really? Hey, there you go, 19,050 points. Meme. Sixth position. That's that's my high, highest score ever. Oh, that's uh, Tempest once again. The reason that cut out was uh, I bumped into Mr. Bagley at that point. So. But uh, yeah, so I did, uh, the guy said that's a really impressive score, so I was quite, quite chuffed with my 19,000. Defender, Berserk again. I had quite a few shots of that, but I seemed to get worse. The more goes I had, the, the worse I got. And Gorf played that, got, got quite far into it. That's uh, Hyper Sports, I did play that as well at one point. No, that's sorry, Karate Champ. As you can see, that you know there weren't massive crowds. I mean, this was quite late on in the day, so um, you know, it was certainly it was thirteen quid for a ticket, and I've got to say I've really enjoyed it. You know, I think because I went along myself, I didn't feel guilty about playing games. Whereas before, I've always gone along with the intention of meeting people, and I always feel a wee bit guilty when I, I want to go and play a game. But because I was there myself, I could just enjoy myself. Now I did buy two games, um, I got Gradius 5, um, which I've been after for a long long time, and I also got Mario uh, Soccer, is it Mario Soccer I think it's called? Mario Striker. I've seen that get played at Play Blackpool and I always thought it looks really good, so I got that for quite a decent price. So that was two games that I was after for a long time, couldn't get them in Blackpool, got them both off the first stall I looked at today, so even though there was very few stalls, um, I got what I wanted, which was fantastic. But I was going to buy that SNES joystick, and I'm like, nah, you're alright. Yeah, pole position, never got a chance to play that. Ah, there was outrun. Why didn't I see that? Had a few shots of Galaga. Never played a uh, afterburner. Yep, so that is kind of it. I'm kind of just duplicating stuff. You, as you can see, there, there's not the same volume of machines that you get at the, the bigger events. But I really enjoyed it out of all the events. Apart from the meeting people part, which I always enjoy, I probably enjoyed this one most of all. Pro probably because it was only a 40 minute drive rather than a 4-5 hour drive. But uh, yeah, you can see there, it's not particularly busy.
certainly by about four o'clock it was getting quite empty. Now this is sociable soccer. If I was to describe it, I could just see it kind of feels like sensible soccer mixed with kickoff. Kickoff too. That's how it kind of felt. Really, really fluent. I mean, apparently this is only 50% complete, but really good. I can't wait for this to come out. We've got wee highlights as well, like that. <laughs> But it's very, very arcadey, which is no bad thing. And I did play that one. Was it something Tomcat and eh, Joker Poker? Jackpot. I can definitely see the appeal of uh, pin tables. So that's it, guys. That is me just panning around. So if uh, you're watching this tonight and you live local, then I would get along there tomorrow. I'm not going back tomorrow. Uh, one day's enough. But uh, anyway, listen guys, I hope you enjoyed watching it, and as usual, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my main master channel. Please feel free to like, comment or subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter.